food. It's what's for dinner. Jesus Christ, I don't know how to open videos anymore. I don't, are people even gonna get that reference? Abby, don't, don't go near the camera. How do you know when I'm filming you start getting squirrely? You can't be in the shot. So you gotta ski daddle. Go ahead. Hi guys, today I'm gonna be going back to my roots and eating, drum roll please, gross foods for your entertainment. Well kinda, I mean it seems gross to me. I have scoured the corners of the internet to find the most unappetizing food combinations that people swear are actually good. So for this video I have procured an, an expensive amount of food that once this video is over I will never financially recover from. But you know, content is content I guess, that's what we're here for. So without further ado, let us begin. I'm going to jump cut now to my food eating area which is going to be like five feet to the left but you won't know that through the power of editing magic. All right, here we are with all of the delicacies and all the things that I'm going to ruin my body with. Up first, we have what I think is the most jarring of all the food combinations, which would be uh, soy sauce and ice cream. But we're already starting hot. Now, personally, and this is a hot take, I actually enjoy ice cream. I know, I know. It's, I'm a very interesting and handsome man. And I also friggin' love soy sauce. I'm one of those appalling white people that ruins sushi because God forbid I don't cover it in a week's worth of sodium. But that being said, I mean, I like these things separately. So that probably means that I'll like them together, right? I mean, that's not true. I probably wouldn't mix like taco meat and pancake batter. Ooh, I might. If you could deep fry that, I gotta write that down. But while I was looking for things on the internet to try, people seem to really like this combo, even though every bone in my body is telling me not to put this poisonous combination inside of it. So anyway, I went with plain Jane vanilla ice cream and that classic brand of soy sauce that you see at Asian restaurants, because I'm just getting the base level of this combination. I'm not doing anything fancy, I just wanna see if it works. So let's get this thing cracking. Let me just take off the ice cream panties. Jesus Christ, why did I say that? I guess I should do just one scoop. I'm not gonna like really, I, I don't wanna, you know, look fat on camera. I don't have fingernails, so I have to use my teeth for everything, and that's why my dentist loves me. All right, just pour this on top of the ice cream. Ooh, that was a lot, that was a lot. All right, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. Oh, Jesus Christ. But it kind of looks like a chocolate sundae. Uh, so it's probably, I'll just make my brain believe that's what it is, so I can get this down my gullet. Truly a mockery of God's design. Let's dig in. My mouth's watering like I'm gonna puke. I don't think, I th may, or maybe I'm appetized, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I didn't put enough soy sauce, but that's really good. Just add a little bit more of that. That was a lot more of that, but whatever. It's hard to describe. It's pretty much just salty ice cream, which makes sense. People put like sea salt on their, their confectionaries all the time. But there definitely is this little twang of like something that shouldn't be happening. Like I'm eating uh, sushi and ice cream at the same time, like someone who is just no longer pregnant. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I'll give it like a six out of 10. Cause I might as well, I would just put salt. I don't know why the soy sauce has to come in. It definitely has that umami thing, whatever that is. I don't know what umami means, but it definitely has that going on for it. Oh, that was a lot of salt. Okay, four out of 10. It's not that good. I feel like people who like this are pretending to like it because they want to pretend to have a personality. Just put salt in your ice cream or something. Cause this is just, this is a, 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 a disgrace. That is enough of that. Oh boy, does that food pairing stink. But you know what doesn't stink? I don't know if that, it spritzed. I don't know if that picked up on the camera. Scentbird, thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Scentbird. Scentbird is a scent fragrance. Oh, I'm not gonna be able to say this. Scent fragrance, scent fragrance, scent fragrance subscription service. Scentbird is a scent fragrance subscription service that was so hard to say. It allows you to explore different scents without committing to a full size bottle. They're the perfect size to fit in any pocket so you can have a little stealthy spray whenever you're feeling stinky. Scentbird lets you choose new designers or niche fragrances every month for just, get this, I, I've said it before, but I, I'll say it again, $17. Just $17 is all cost. And each month you pick what you want and receive so there's no surprises like those dumb loot box subscriptions you can get. This month I was sent Versace, Dolce & Gabbana, and what's the last Last one, it's very fancy. It didn't break. It didn't break because it's a good product. Also, it was Prada, so it's another cool company. You just put it in the case, it's locked, you twist it, you spray it, and it smells delicious. I wear this one when I'm going out to the clubs, and I wear this one when I'm staying home and feel sad. And I wear this one when I go to the bank. So don't pair your disgusting, stinky body with a drugstore cologne, use Scentbird. I don't, why did I write that? That was so mean. Use my coupon code BTUG for 50%, 50? 55. 55% off your first purchase from Semper. Just a little over $7 for your first month. Available in US and Canada. Sorry everybody else, but this is this is for the North Americans. Semper, use your thinky, don't be stinky. Once again, I'm just giving you free slogans and you're not using them and I'm getting a little hurt. Okay, back to the video. Thanks for, thanks for watching the ad, I appreciate it. All right, next up we have Pringles and whipped cream. 
Jesus Christ. There's no way this combo was discovered under sober circumstances. Only a stoner would try and combine the salty onionness of a Pringle with the creamy wetness of cow juice. But I mean, I guess the shape of a Pringle is kind of designed to be like a lazy taco shell. Like it's just begging to be filled. Don't take that out of context. And obviously I'm gonna use sour cream and onion Pringles. I'm not gonna use plain Pringles. I'm not a pervert. We get flavors in this house where we don't get anything at all. And then we just take out the whipped cream and get going. I'm not sure what the Pringle to whipped cream ratio should be. So I'm just gonna eyeball it, I guess. All right. Okay, that, all right. Kinda looks good. It looks like something you'd get in a French bakery. It looks like something like a cannoli or something. That's Italian, whatever. It does kind of smell like a nightmare, but let's give it the good old college try. It's coming in waves. I think I probably should have used a plain Pringle for that. Once again, I get it. It's like saltiness mixed with sweetness and it's like a cream puff almost. It's pretty good in theory, but oh man. Oh man, did that not work like it should have. I, I, the onion really came through. Obviously I fucked up somewhere along the way, but I'm not gonna leave this up. I can't even get out from behind this. I, my apartment's so small. So um, I'm just gonna leave it where it is. I'm gonna give that a four, but I'll bump it up to a five because I can see how that's supposed to work. But also the consistency of a Pringle is um, grainy. But it's like the particle board of chips. It's made up of all other potato chips that are just broken and melted into one shape. So it, it's 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 crumbly in your mouth. It doesn't work that well. Four. Fuck it. I'm giving that a four. That was not good. The internet is disappointing me again. Again, it's disappointing me so horribly. Up next, we have Coca-Cola and peanuts. What? I wrote this video. I'm just constantly not excited for what I'm about to try. Coca-Cola and peanuts. They're not even the same form of matter. How is this supposed to work? I guess this is a big thing in the South where people put peanuts in their Coca-Cola. Whatever the fuck they're up to. I don't even, I don't want to pretend like I know what the South's all about. I don't have a bottle opener. Can I use my teeth? Are my teeth gonna break? <sighs> Man, it's been a long time since college. There we go. But I guess I gotta make room for uh, the peanuts in this glass bottle. Also, I had to pay a premium to make this video because glass bottle Coke is way more expensive than canned Coke for some fucking reason. And I'm a Pepsi man, I feel like a traitor. I would never buy this on a normal day. But anything for the views. I, don't, I personally don't think that's better than regular Coke. I don't get the hype. I just don't understand what ingredient is supposed to be affected. Is it the peanuts that get Coca-Cola-y or is it the Coca-Cola that get peanut-y? All right, let's see what we can do here. Okay. <laughs> All right, that seems like enough. Call me Professor Snape, cause we're making, cause we're making potions today. This is probably the stupidest one so far, but it's also the most well known. So if it's good enough for the American South, here we go. Wow. Wow, that's actually really good. I'm learning a few things. First of all, I'm realizing how salty Coca-Cola is by itself, because adding a little bit of salt wasn't that big of a deal. And there's a, how much sodium is in there? 30 milligrams? I don't know. I don't know anything about math, but that, it was good. The peanuts, the peanut flavor really does well for Coca-Cola. I don't know what that's all about. And Coca-Cola has made so many dog shit spin-off flavors that you think they would add peanut in the mix, but I don't know. That's actually really good. Like an eight, eight out of 10. I would probably do this if I wasn't making a video. I might start doing this. Yeah, and the longer the peanuts sit in there, the, the more they, they permeate. That's really fucking good. Wow, I'm actually really excited about that. That's a discovery. I'm very excited to live my life from here on out. Up next, we have bananas and bacon. Mmm, okay. Now this is the first recipe where I go in with a bias. Well, a strong bias. Every I've hated everything I've done so far, but this is the most strong bias I have. I do not enjoy the humble banana. Never have, never will. I j I'm a big texture man, and I don't like mushy textures. So I don't like any fruit, really. Every fruit kind of just explodes in your mouth. Don't take these things out of context. I'm talking about food. But bananas are no better. Bananas are the mushiest of fruits. But I mean, bacon... Bacon rips. Bacon is fantastic. Not to sound like I'm an annoying person on the internet in 2008, but I love bacon. Bacon is actually really good. If you can't tell, this bacon was prepared in a microwave. Uh, I didn't do it properly because I don't have the time. And also, I'm not, you know, this isn't a Mission with Star recipe. I'm fucking just being an asshole. I'm going to slice the banana in a very pretty way because I do like cutting bananas. Bananas are fun to cut, not fun to eat. Break off a little bit of the bacon. And here we have the, the obviously worst thing I'm going to eat today. Mmm, wow. It's like I put a banana and bacon in my mouth at the same time. I'm fucking stupid. Not everything I've tried today has been good, but I will say that, oh God, I, don't, I hate this. I will say that everything I've made today is, you know, they take two things and combine it into something new, a new flavor. This is just a banana and bacon in your mouth. 
They're, they're two combative flavors. They don't mix at all. It's just paparazzi flashes of flavor. Bacon, banana, bacon, banana, and it never fucking mixes. So that was four, no, three. That was terrible. And last but certainly not least uh, is the peanut butter and cheese sandwich. To be frank, I'm already pretty angry just thinking about this combination. I personally think that PB&J is already a flawed combination. It's childish and it's overdone and it's not that good in my opinion. And this is a step above that in terms of I'm 11 years old and mom and dad left home for the first time and I have no parental supervision so I'm just gonna make something gross because I can. I mean, Jesus Christ, this is worse than the Fluffernutter, which is Massachusetts state sandwich and an abomination to God and all his creatures. I don't see what's wrong with just eating a peanut butter sandwich. No one ever gives their the flowers to peanut butter sandwiches. They're good. You don't have to add anything else. Peanut butter and bread is delicious. And then we add the cheese. I got Boar's Head's Vermont cheddar because I'm not a broke bitch. Also, the store I shopped at didn't have any like cheaper brands, so that's what we're dealing with. I'm assuming because this is such a white trash uh, delicacy that it's probably meant for me to eat American cheese with this, but I just thought, you know, sharp cheddar would, I don't know, do a little bit better. This is like the lowest of the low, but here I am doing it for views. I, I can't tell what's going on in my mouth right now. Is this really good? This might be really good. <laughs> Fuck, it's good. The creaminess of the peanut butter mixes with the creaminess of the cheese really well. And the, oh my God, it's actually really good. Let me rinse this down with my peanut coke. <laughs> There's a chance you could swallow a peanut. Didn't put that into perspective. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, I almost choked to death. I can't get out of this. So I would have, then the cops can't come. I almost choked to death. This sandwich is fantastic. The tartness of the cheese mixed with the peanut butter and the consistency is fantastic. And bread and cheese is great and peanut butter and cheese is great. And it feels like you're just eating those two great meals at once. This is fucking nine out of 10. Nine out of 10. Make this, eat this. And I don't mean nine out of 10 on a scale of like, it's not a, a steak, but like, you know, in terms of like, you're struggling financially and mentally, <laughs> this is a fantastic sandwich. I'm gonna keep eating it, fuck it. I was gonna like start doing the outro and then talk, but I'm gonna eat this while I talk because it's so goddamn good. All right, so there you have it. Uh, I don't know what it is, but you have it now. I don't want it back. I will say that I feel like humans figured food out within the mid 20th century, and we don't need to keep trying to reinvent the wheel. These are pretty stupid ideas that uh, just don't need to be uh, real. You can just, you know, go in a recipe book and figure something out. This is stupid. This is good though. <laughs> mm, I'm conflicted. Like, comment, and subscribe if you like this format. And comment weird food combos that you actually enjoy. But don't say fucking uh, pickles and peanut butter on a sandwich. I saw that a lot on the internet and I, that made me so angry I didn't put it in the video. That is stupid. Semper, use your finky, don't be stinky.